looking at a little bit of place value to begin with this morning. On your team... Very often, many dyslexic children are very good at 3D thinking. They can be very good visualisers. They're very good at remembering uh, meaning in terms of stories, uh, things that they've seen, things that they've done. Uh, what they find difficult is remembering symbols. But that can be made much easier for them if we use multisensory methods, if we use ways of teaching that, that work to their strengths. Teachers at Southfield Primary School near Swindon are implementing Kate's approach of working to the strengths of dyslexics by carefully designing the classroom layout and their use of resources. Children that have dyslexia need to actually be able to feel and see what you're asking them to do. If I'm just standing at the front of the lesson and I'm just showing them on the board, it's very difficult for them to, to thoroughly understand it. So they have to have the resources in front of them, tactile, be able to see, hear, so it's multi-sensory. So it's something for them to get their hands into. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Teachers make sure the room is arranged with plenty of floor space, giving the pupils lots of room for physical activities. I use hoops within my lesson to help with multiplication and division, simply because it's another multi-sensory way of the children learning. So I have the hoops led out on the floor. I would then have labels, so the children are also having to think about their place value. So when I'm labelling them, this is my decimal point, so which column would come next? Who thinks they know what this is here? What do they think this might be? Liam? A decimal point. Good boy. So I'm going to put this right at the end of our hoops. So I'm going to place this on the floor. So this is my decimal point. I asked the children to come up and say, I'd like you to be seven tens. So they have to think about which column they're going to be standing in. If I wanted to multiply this number by 10, what do I need to do, Callum? Jump to the left. How many jumps are we going to do to the left if we multiply by 10? Sarah? One. One. So, can you show me on your sliders or your whiteboards what my answer would be? The children that are not involved will be using whiteboards or they will be using a slider to help them. They will work out the answer and then as a class we will get the children in the hoops, tell them where they need to jump. Brilliant. So what column are you now in? Hundreds. Good girl. So you've got four hundreds, haven't we? Motor memory is often very strong for dyslexic. So if she has them physically moving, this is something they're going to be able to remember doing. Um, the use of colour is often very strong for dyslexics. Actually, place, the place that you teach somebody is often very strong for dyslexics. So even if it's a different part of the carpet, when they visualise that, it's as if they're playing back a video or a film in their mind and they can picture themselves being there. So these are really important memory strengths for dyslexics. When we're going to do some adding together, can you remember what method we would use to, when we're writing down our method? It's really important to have lots of bright, colourful displays that the children can actually physically get up and use them. For instance, with the numeracy board, if they can't remember a method for written addition, it's, OK, we'll go and have a look at the board, see which one it will jog their memory. So when you're adding up, just to remind you of the method you would use. All right, so next time, if you're not sure, this is when you need to come up and have a look. Many dyslexic children experience visual stress difficulties. What this means is that they seem to be particularly sensitive to glare from the white page or from a white board, for example. Those children who are sensitive to visual stress can have a crowding effect from the glare. So it can make the letters seem to um, merge together. It can make them sometimes unstable. Children will say that the words dance um, and they're not really being able to have consistent learning about the look of a word because it's not consistent every time they look at it. So it can be any of the other... To combat visual stress, the school have come up with a simple adaptation which doesn't compromise the class. The whiteboard we use I dim it every time I use a backfill of a very pale colour so it's not quite so glaring so the black text doesn't really hit out because again it makes it very difficult to read. All right, so we've only got one five-headed alien on our spaceship. Doing activities in this way, using the resources I've done, making sure that everybody in the class has the opportunity to use them, make sure that the dyslexic children do not feel 
any different to anybody else. And they leave this room, hopefully, feeling 10 feet tall, that they've been able to achieve. <laughs>